You're about to watch a Trains Newswire video. If you enjoy what you see, consider watching some of our other full-length videos. Selling Sunshine, the Florida Trains. Locomotive 2017, a video companion to our best-selling annual issue. Big Steam is back. All of these and more are available from our website, KalmbachHobbyStore.com. Hello, today is Thursday, December 21st, 2017. Welcome to another episode of Trains Newswire Roundup. I am Steve Sweeney. Hi, I'm Jim Wren. Lots of news this week, but yep. uh, all dominated by two events, uh, two very sad things, the loss of CSX uh, CEO Hunter Harrison last weekend, and then of course the uh, wreck of Am Amtrak Cascades number 501 on its yep. inaugural trip. Uh, on a new route uh, with loss of life, uh, three folks that perished in that crash on Monday, and uh, our condolences go out to all involved in, in both of these tragedies. You know, Jim, you know, it's, it's unusual to have two big news stories, but two big news stories in railroading that have been taken up by the mass media so well and so thoroughly. So, I mean, I don't think there's much else to talk about this week other than those two. Right. Um, I, I, let's talk about the crash first, because we've got a, uh, a popular train on a popular route, right. or a popular schedule, and now a new route, the Port Defiance, or Point Defiance Bypass, Bypass up yep. near Seattle. And, you know, everything that we're hearing about it, just little strange things all over the place. You know, we've got the new Siemens Charger up front, we've got a P, uh, P42 in back pushing, uh, but it happened on a bridge, rollover, which is, it's crazy. Three persons confirmed dead, right. including a, a few, um, Few rail fans injured, people that we know. We're not mm -hmm. gonna we're not gonna say those names, but our, our thoughts and prayers go out to them. Uh, and it comes at a time when infrastructure is in the news a lot. Right. We're talking about what's going to happen with railroadings. What I think is what I think is really interesting is that there's been very little talk about positive train control. It's happened a little bit, but not like it was after 188. Certainly not after the uh, the crash outside of Philadelphia uh, last year, where you had the uh, the backhoe hit by uh, the Palmetto. Right. Right, and, and and it also, you know, just looking at the pictures, um, one of our photographers hiked into the site right after mm -hmm. the crash and uh, got some really good pictures. It's, it's a really strange scene. There's no track defects. Mm -hmm. uh, it's almost like that train leaped into the air um, and just went right across you know, over into the uh, to the I-5 uh, right away. It, it did its best version of a Lionel out it of did Lionel a very train set out of strange control. thing. And then then you've got the back half of the train it was troll car Talgo set, mm -hmm. and the Talgo cars, of course, are semi permanently coupled together, Correct. and it takes a lot to break them apart. And these things are all broken apart, which really tells me there's a lot of force going on. And uh, I'm going to be really interested in how the NTSB investigates this one and what they come up with because it. A lot of things, like you said earlier, just don't make sense about it. Yeah. Now, one thing that I had questioned, and, 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 and my coworkers, uh, the staff members here, corrected me. I thought that these um, should have had more, or Talgo locomotives, Talgo, Talgo cab car, but no, they never had those. And so I'm curious, a lot of the Talgo train sets, because they are semi-permanently coupled, are designed to sort of have the same equipment throughout. I wonder if that might play into this at all. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's, it's going to be a very interesting um, investigation and um, we're glad the NTSB is on it uh, because they do a great job, they're very they thorough do. and uh, look for a lot of coverage in Newswire this week and of course in the next issue we've got coming up. Absolutely, absolutely. Well okay, to the other big story that's come up, Hunter Harrison has died. Um, wow, 73 years old, CEO at four Class 1 railroads. Uh, I think he's tied up there with... Probably with Jack Berenger if I had yeah. to guess. Uh, uh, as far and, as and it's it's a rarefied a, group. It of, is a very small group, and uh, of course he had just gone on medical leave last week. Correct. Jim Foote, uh, who he'd brought in as president, uh, took over as interim CEO. Uh, but in all likelihood, CSX will move him into the spot, mm -hmm. top spot. Now we know that Foote has a lot of marketing experience, but not a lot of operating experience. So Correct. we're expecting that he's probably going to bring in a chief operating officer as well. Yes, we're looking. We're looking forward to see what else is going to happen with that. Um, there's been a lot of a uh, lot of uh, speculation in the trade press. You know, we knew, we all knew that Hunter Harrison had some health problems coming into CSX, but what was it that the board did or did not know ahead of time about his health condition? So now, uh, people who are big in Wall Street are asking the question: Why didn't the board demand some kind of um, medical evaluation that they could see, rather than just a simple letter saying Hunter Harrison is fit for duty? Yeah. 
you know. I, it, would, it will not surprise me if they don't get sued by this. Now, they yes. do have a backup in that the shareholders ratified that decision That's right. later on in the year. So a lot of, a lot of yeah. people are, are set up to, to take responsibility for yeah, this. That's an important thing. So, uh, in, interesting yeah. too, well, interesting too, you know, so two or uh, three executives just departed, chief legal, uh, mm -hmm. former chief marketing, and then uh, chief operating officer. I'm wondering if any of those individuals might have a role coming back. It's, uh, that, that's an interesting scenario too. Uh, you know, and a lot of people have talked about that. Uh, you know, I've heard that as well, but you know, we'll just, we'll have to see what they decide they want to pick up. And Absolutely. Go with. Absolutely. So, so, lots in the air there. Can we talk about something happier? We should talk about something happier. Steve has been gone for a few days. Uh, this is his first day back on the mm -hmm. job after some nice parental leave. That's right. Yes. Congratulations to yeah. you and your family. Thank you. My wife and I are the, uh, the happy, proud parents of a new baby boy, Benjamin Alexander. He was born last Thursday, so a week ago today. So, happy one week um, birth date. Wow. To you, Benjamin, all right. and, uh, and thank you for all the well wishes from contributors and from readers. We do appreciate it. So, We were going to cut away. We were joking before we, we went into filming yeah. that we should cut away to a diaper changing back at Steve's house, but <laughs> we, we will not no, do that. You don't, you. you don't want to see that. You don't want to see that. No, so. Not something you want to see. Uh, but one other happy note that we have today. Today uh, is 10 days until, uh, well, December 31st the new year. And so starting today, we're going to be posting trains, magazines, and trains newswires, top 10 stories of the year list. Now things have changed a little bit since I thought about this uh, seven or 10 days ago. The world has changed since you've been gone. Yes, I know. Yes. I'm, I'm you know, glad nothing happened, right? Uh, but we're going to be starting that list today with number 10, the, the, um, the 10th most important story following up every single day of the calendar year until December 31st where we're going to publish the most important story in Train's editor's mind. And we're going to follow up that with a uh, newsletter to all of our uh, email subscribers after that. So be sure to check out Newswire for all of those stories and, and be sure to discuss with us what you thought should have been on the top 10 list this year. So for everyone at Train's Magazine, we wish you a very happy and Merry Christmas. Take care.